Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to graduation. At this moment, I'd like to ask that you find and take your seats for the procession of the faculty and the class of 2021.
Again, welcome. Please find your seat. And I would direct your attention to the fanfare of the class of 2021 written by Associate Professor of Music, Haekyung Lee. Wow, we made it. <laughs> members of the class of 2021, parents, family members, faculty, staff, and honored guests, on behalf of the Board of Trustees of Denison University, I am delighted to welcome you to Denison's 180th annual commencement exercises. <clears throat> I'm especially glad to welcome you to this in-person ceremony. After so many months, so many months of uncertainty, sacrifice, challenge, and Zooming. And to our guests watching on live stream, a special welcome to you as well. Graduates, congratulations. Today is the day, the culmination of your four years at Denison University. The classes, the exams, the papers and projects are all behind you now. The masks, social distancing on campus, and Zooms, well, nearly so. You've worked hard. You've adapted to the extraordinary circumstances this year has presented, and you've emerged resilient and successful. Take time to enjoy this moment, and take pride in all you have accomplished. But also remember, this is a commencement, not an ending, but a beginning. Today is the next step in a journey of lifelong learning. Today, as you join the ranks of some 40,000 Denison alumni who did not wear a mask at their graduation, and like them, you will be called upon to lead by example, by excellence, in your chosen endeavors, and in service to others. This combination of achievement and service, of learning and doing, is what characterizes Denisonians. We know it will characterize the members of this class the intrepid class of 2021 as you move forward from this ceremony. Today, as we mark the conclusion of your student experience, we look to the future you will build. We might see you one day sitting on this stage ready to receive an honorary degree. Maybe you will stand where I stand now at some future commencement, looking out across a field of graduating Denisonians and encouraging them to serve and achieve. Wherever you go, whatever you do, we know that you will represent your alma mater well. On behalf of the trustees of the university, 
Thank you, class of 2021. <clears throat> For being part of the Denison family, you have impressed us, inspired us, and made a tremendous contribution to this college and its community. And we, including your parents and families, are truly excited to see what you do from here. Congratulations and welcome to the Society of Alumni. It is my pleasure to call to the podium the 20th president of Denison University, Dr. Adam Weinberg, who will lead us in these proceedings. Thank you. So the people who got the shade, were you nice to Raj or you did something I didn't do? Mm. I think I made him angry yesterday, so he put me on the podium, facing right into the sun. Um, a year ago, I never, ever, ever thought we'd actually be here, in person, doing this. But even more than that, a year ago, I never thought I would stand on this stage and say that I've never been more grateful or more proud to be a Denisonian. Um, What we accomplished together this year is extraordinary. As many of you know, on social media, I often use the hashtag Denison Proud. This year, I'm adding Denison Gratitude to my list. Before I do anything else, I just want to, I want to speak to the seniors for a minute. And I want to repeat a story that many of you have already heard once, some of you twice this week. But I want to say it one last time, and I want to say it in front of your parents. A year ago, um, it wasn't clear what the fall would look like for Denison, for higher education, or for anything else for that matter. But early in the crisis, if you remember, Denison did something that a lot of other colleges and universities didn't do. We put our flag in the ground, and we publicly said that we would welcome everybody who wanted to come back, back to campus in the fall. We would find a way to make this work. When we made that decision, to be honest, we weren't actually really sure that was gonna be possible. But we knew it was important to set it as our goal. And by that I mean it was more than just saying we were gonna try. Try means you give something a shot. A goal means you set your sights on something and you work to your fullest to make it happen. You only fail when you've exhausted every single option. That's the flag we put in the ground. Why was that important? Very simple. It was important because you deserved it. Your education matters and you deserved for your college to stand by you, to do everything we could to give you the year that you both needed and deserved. But second, if anybody should be able to pull this off, it should be a liberal arts college. That's what we do. We educate and inspire students to deal with ambiguity and change, to be lifelong learners, to weave disparate ideas into new ways of seeing the world, to connect people and ideas across academic disciplines to address challenges, social problems, and innovate. I'm not being critical of any other college and the decisions they made. Lots of colleges made different decisions for good reasons, context matters. But we felt that it was important for this college in that historical moment to stand with our students and to open the campus. All that sounded really great in May. In late July, if you remember, a lot of other liberal arts colleges changed course on us. And they decided that they either wouldn't reopen or they would reopen and only welcome back some of their students. They did it for good reasons. But again, we made a different decision and we trudged forward. All that sounded good in July. And then if you remember, everybody came back. And those first few weeks were, um, they were complicated. We learned early that managing COVID as a virus would be challenging, but something we could do. But managing people's different perspectives and views and anxieties around the virus was gonna be hard. Um, students, faculty, and staff, if you remember, came back in very, very different places. We all had different views of what acceptable risk should be and what university policy should be and what we needed to do and wouldn't do. And there were a lot of moments, a lot of moments, those first few weeks when I would sit on my porch 
at what I consider to be late at night, about 10.30 at night, just responding to emails, talking to our team, thinking about the day, and questioning what we'd gotten ourselves into. Had we done the right thing? And then there was the magic moment, a moment that I will never forget for the rest of my life. It was a Saturday or maybe a Sunday, and I was talking to somebody in student development, and they interrupted me, and they said, this is gonna work. Looking for a little bit of affirmation, I said to them, what do you know that I don't know? And they said something really simple. They said, I was at Silverstein last night with our seniors, and our seniors came back to Dennis in this fall, committed to making it work. They're doing the right things, they don't wanna go home, they're talking to each other, they're talking to their friends, athletes are talking to their teams, and C3 organizations are rallying people, and DCJ is doing what it needs to do. The Dennis and seniors are gonna make sure that this happens. I just, from the bottom of my heart, can't thank you enough for the leadership you lent this campus this fall. You demonstrated that we could be together safely. Who knew we had outdoor spaces or fire pits or food trucks? But you led that way. We had some fun. You led by example. And at that moment, I knew we'd get through the year. All a long way of saying, um, you will always be a special class for me. You will be the class that made it work. You will be the class of Denisonians who rose to the occasion, did what needed to be done to help the college open stay open, and do a surprising number of normalish things. So thank you. Be proud of what you've accomplished this year. You will come back for your fifth reunion, your 10th, your 15th, your 20th, but the best reunion, you will come back for your 50th reunion, and I will not be the president, that I guarantee you. <laughs> but when you come back, tell some stories about this year, and remember with great pride of what you did together and how you did it. And remember that at the end of the year, there wasn't a college president in the country who was more grateful to a group of students as this one was to the great Denison class of 2021. Can we give them a round of applause? So at graduation, I always wanna celebrate the people of this great college and the relationships between us and the liberal arts. And we also always take a moment at graduation um, to just remember members of, our, of your class who have passed away during your time here. And I do want to remember Adriana Santiago, class of Denison 2021. And I just ask for a brief moment of silence in her remembrance. Thank you. So let me use this year to talk about what it means to be a Denisonian. I hope this year, among many things, left you with a clear sense for why a liberal arts education is so important in this historical moment. Because this year, we didn't just teach the liberal arts, we used it to navigate the challenges in front of us. As I alluded to a moment ago, keeping a college open during a global pandemic turns out to not be very easy especially when the pandemic is caused by a virus that we don't fully understand and it keeps changing on us. To open the campus in August and to keep it open throughout the year, we had to rely upon three foundational liberal arts attributes that you have hopefully learned at Denison. These are the ones that I acquired during my undergraduate liberal arts education and they've anchored my life. As you get ready to graduate, I hope they will guide your life as they've, as they've guided my own. I often say that Denison unlocks the potential of our students to be the architects of their own lives. Use these three intellectual tools to build your life. They are as follows. The first, intellectual rigor, which is defined as the ability to form ideas based on fact, reason, and rationality, and the ability to discern fact from fiction, science from politics. Second, intellectual creativity and critical thinking, which is the ability to see problems in new ways, to connect ideas into new ways of seeing the world, to be critical thinkers and creative problem solvers, to find opportunities where others only see challenges, to be forward-looking and solution-oriented. And third, 
and maybe the most important in this moment, intellectual humility, which I will define as that life habit of realizing that there is always a possibility that we might be wrong. And hence, we should all be lifelong learners who are always seeking out alternative views and facts that can challenge, refine, sharpen, or even change our thinking. As a college, we leaned into these attributes to guide us throughout the year. They allowed us to see ambiguity and change as normal, not abnormal. To connect disparate data points, to weave different disciplinary and professionalized views, to see more clearly what was happening in the possible paths forward. To problem solve and iterate our way forward, understanding how one small step at a time can lead to great things happening. To make decisions in a period of uncertainty with a clear and consistent focus on our purpose, on what truly matters, and on what a particular moment requires of us. It was liberal arts attributes that allowed us as a college to open in the campus in the fall, to manage to keep COVID cases on a campus low, to have most of our classes in person this spring, to play sports and have arts performances, to find a way to have social life, and most important, for us to be together and to form relationships that create a life-shaping liberal arts education. At their core, the liberal arts gives us the intellectual tools to rise to the challenges that life puts in front of us and to find a way to work with others to achieve what most people believe cannot be done. As a liberal arts college, we also tried hard to lean into our values. The liberal arts, I hope you've learned over the last four years, is about educating and inspiring students to lead lives and to choose to lead those lives in ways that contributes to things larger than yourselves. For this college, that meant keeping one thing, only one thing, front and center as we made decisions all year, our people and the relationships between us. Denison is defined by the people who come here, the relationships we form with each other, and the way those relationships shape our lives. When the pandemic hit, we stated that our top priority would be to stand beside our people, which we defined as standing beside our students to make sure you receive the absolute best education we could deliver, and standing beside our faculty and staff who make this life-shaping education possible. You received a liberal arts education from a college that tries to use the liberal arts to guide itself. We don't always get it right which is why intellectual rigor, intellectual creativity, and intellectual humility are so important. But our purpose and how we fulfill that purpose are about the liberal arts. And hopefully, we operated this year helping you understand the power of the education you received at Denison. I want to put a footnote on that, and I want to just pull on one thread of what we did, and I want to encourage all of you to do the same in your professional lives. Many of you, maybe most of you, will wind up running businesses, nonprofits, and organizations of various sorts. There was a time, right around this time last year, when millions of Americans were losing their jobs, and there was a lot of panic and fear. At that moment, this college stood up and promised every member of our staff that they would have continuous employment. We stood beside the staff who have always stood beside the college and always stood beside you. If you wind up running something, always stand beside your people. It's the right thing to do, and it keeps organizations healthy. But most important, more than anything else, one of the great privileges of leadership is doing right by other people. So, to the great Denison class of 2021, it's been an honor to have you on campus these last four years. It's been a privilege to endure this year with you together and to accomplish what we've been able to accomplish together. I will miss you in this college where will ever be grateful for your leadership this year. So just a few notes of gratitude for those who made it possible. Can we all stand and thank the faculty for the work they do to educate our students?
People could sit. It's 80 degrees and sunny. I won't make you. I won't make you stand. This is a faculty that cares deeply about students and is fully committed to delivering a life-shaping education. At no time in the college's history has more been asked of them or more been on display than over the last year. Second, along these lines, I want to mention my respect and gratitude for our staff. By this, I mean all of our staff. The student development people who support our students, the staff in institutional advancement who raise funds for financial aid, admissions, athletics, the provost office, and all of the staff, all of the staff who work across the college in facilities and dining, the mailroom, and every other part of campus. Our staff care about, they connect, and they support our students in ways that goes well beyond the norm in higher education. If relationships define Denison, every staff member at Denison embraces and enhances that great quality of Denison. Can we thank them? To all of our parents, grandparents, family members, mentors, friends, and everybody else who helped our students along the way. For all the ways you provided support, can I just ask our students to stand and face the audience and thank them. And finally, to our students. Our students are smart, they're interesting, they're curious, and they're engaged. They're also empathetic, open-minded, and ethical. Our students work hard in classrooms and labs and perform at exceptionally high levels on athletic fields, art studios, stages, and many, many other venues. Our students learn from each other. I have huge admiration for this generation of Denisonians. Just thank you. Thank you for who you are and for being part of this great college. So here is my charge to you, the Denison class of 2021. Take the education you've received here and live our mission. Be autonomous thinkers, discerning moral agents, and engaged citizens. Develop your own views and voice based on your liberal arts training and, that you, and use it positively to impact the world around you, however you define that. Realize the importance of differences of opinion work across differences to find new ways of being, living, and thinking. To do this, you must be lifelong learners. Read often and widely, join book clubs, be patrons of the arts, attend public lectures, set a tone within your communities that learning is important, facts matter, and part of developing fulfilling personal, professional, and civic lives. Second, embrace and sustain the relationships you formed here. Many of you will remain lifelong friends. Some of you will become lifelong friends with Denisonians who you've not even met yet. You are graduating into an alumni community of 40,000 alumni who will provide relationships that contribute to your life in ways that are hard to imagine today. And finally, stay connected and committed to this college. Come back for your reunions. When you meet interesting high school students, suggest they look at Denison for college. Put a Denison coffee mug on your desk at work, a bumper sticker on your car, and a Denison pennant on your refrigerator at home. You are great people, and we want the world to know that you are Denisonians. Identify yourself so other members of our extended community can do the same. So the rest of the ceremony marks the end of a year that we will all remember. We should remember it with pride and gratitude, and we should remember what this year taught us about being a Denisonian and how we came to understand the importance of a liberal arts education. Congratulations to the great Denison class of 2021. So I now present to you the chair of the faculty, Dr. Susan Kennedy, associate professor of psychology, who will introduce the student speaker. Thank you, President Weinberg. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the faculty, I would first like to offer our sincerest congratulations 
to the great and awesome class of 2021. We will miss you. It's our tradition at Denison that each year a member of the graduating class addresses the audience during the commencement ceremony. The speaker is chosen through a competitive process by a committee of faculty, staff, and students. This year's speaker is an international studies and creative writing double major with a concentration in Middle East and North African studies. She is a talented poet and public speaker who wrote and co-produced her own one-woman show, A Map of Myself, My Odyssey to America, which she has performed in many venues here on campus, in Columbus, and across the United States. She has been a leader on campus working to promote the arts and cross-cultural understanding. And not surprisingly, she is also a 2021 President's Medalist. Will you please welcome to the podium this year's student commencement speaker, Sarah Abu Rashad. Hello, and the biggest congratulations to you, to us, class of 2021. My fellow graduates, soon-to-be alums, our parents and loved ones, our faculty, staff, and extended Denison family, far and near, present and absent, in chairs and on screens. This is the day we've dreamt of since we first stepped foot on campus. And guess what? Against all odds, it is finally here, and we're here together to celebrate it. I remember last year when we, when we were juniors and thought we were the lucky ones, that the pandemic wouldn't affect us. But life had a way of humbling us like that. And I remember the times we used to dread waking up early to our dorm rooms, sprinting, maskless, to our classes. To say that this year has been unique is an understatement. It is unlike any other, not only by our standards as Denisonians, as college students, or even as Americans, but as global citizens, more interconnected than we could have ever imagined. Those who made it before us to this day often complain that when college ended, so did the manual of next steps. And they were suddenly confronted with the real world. I like to think we're special, that the real world wanted to meet us early, so it did. We have now spent over 12 months in continuous historical times. We cannot wait to greet the boring old days at the door. And it pains me to say that this year brought more suffering than anyone expected. The loss of family and community members, of ways to make a living, of plans and hopes and rest and peace, each one of us struggled at one point or another to keep going, to sit in looming uncertainty and loneliness and doubt. And against these hard life lessons, it also didn't help that our own class lessons seemed harder than usual during the pandemic that we almost approached a civil and world war a few times, that the murders of black and brown people continued at alarming rates, that even now as I speak to you, I'm thinking of the latest that happened in my home country, Palestine. The world is not always a happy place. Yet, if there is one thing we take away from our Denison education, it is the ability to take action even in the worst of circumstances. This place has showed us what it looks like to speak up, to be critical and creative at once, to look through someone else's eyes, to crowdsource, to empathize, to advocate, to create, to rise, not by avoiding failure, but by learning quickly from it, to turn to art, to literature, to literature, to merge science and athletics at once, research and performance, 
to find the vitality and will within us instead of surrendering to what's around us. While other universities struggled to stay open, Denison strived, thrived. So to the class of 2021, I say, when Denison thrived, we thrived with it. We are resilient and adaptable and informed and articulate and worldly and innovative. So please give yourself a round of applause for all that you've done. Because you, my friends, are the nation's next leading forces in every field imaginable. And wherever we go, Denison will go with us. We are forever bound by this mighty hill. And while our time here may have felt uniform in many ways, today we're reflecting on moments of our own. It's hard to forget how I hesitated to choose Denison as a high schooler because I felt welcomed, yet different. But my mother said, if you don't go here, somebody braver will. The rebellion of teenage years prevailed, and she wasn't wrong. It takes bravery to belong here, to stand out, whether in a headscarf or without, to love the way Denison loves and support like Denison supports. I am forever grateful to the change I endured here. From an 18-year-old grappling with her sense of voice to a leader, a writer, a speaker, unafraid to use it. Because this is what Denison does best. It sees the potential in us and decides that something must be done and that together we would do it. And today, we did it. I extend my mother's words to you and commend you for your bravery and pray that you never have to use Zoom again. <laughs> that you hold on to the good times and memories and remember the end of our time here, not as time lost, but as time repurposed and our relationships not as severed, but perhaps test tested and our joy not as diminished, but simplified to see people's teeth again, to exchange a handshake or a hug, to crowd an elevator. Soon, the world would get all of this back and more. So in the spirit of celebration, and as some of you might have expected, I do have a poem for you. Though this one, I didn't write myself, but I always come back to. And today, I dedicate it to all of you but especially to my dear friend, Adriana Santiago, who left us too soon. Won't you celebrate with me by Lucille Clifton? Won't you celebrate with me what I have shaped into a kind of life I had no model? Born in Babylon, both non-white and woman, what did I see to be except myself? I made it up. Here, on this bridge between starshine and clay, my one hand holding tight, my other hand, come, come, celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed. Thank you. In an earlier um, draft of the agenda today, I was supposed to speak after Sarah, and I told Raj I wouldn't show up if I had to speak after Sarah. Can we give her another round of applause? And, and to Sarah's mother, who I have the great honor of knowing, who convinced Sarah to come to Denison, you are my new favorite human being, after my wife, of course. So it is now my great honor to introduce the co-governors of this senior class, Fatima Al-Ghazari and Alan Primick, who will present the senior class gift. Just give me 
a second here. All right. Um, good afternoon, fellow members of the class of 2021, President Weinberg and esteemed faculty and administration and beloved family and friends. We would like to take this moment to thank everyone who helped with our senior class gift initiative this year. Will all of the 2021 senior class gift committee members please rise and be recognized for your hard work. Without you, none of this would have been possible. We encourage you to read in your programs the list of seniors who have generously given to the 2021 class gift. We are extremely grateful for what the college has given us, and it will be our honor to continue this philanthropic support of our alma mater as we become alumni. Before we announce our class gift, we would like to thank our families and friends for their continued support of our Denison education. Thank you for cheering us on and for all of the support you have provided throughout our time at Denison, including making gifts of your own to the annual fund. Annual fund dollars ensured our career counseling, academic advising, mentoring, and so much more throughout our time here at Denison. It is our great pleasure today to announce that the class of 2021 have raised almost $2,000 with the Silversteins matching our gifts to the college, that brings our total to almost $4,000. We were so impressed with the number of classmates who decided to make a gift this year. We are so grateful for your participation. Jonathan, class of 1989, and Natalie Silverstein gave a generous gift to the college to inspire hope, goodwill, and persistence in the class of 2021 during a very difficult year. A portion of this generous gift was used as a philanthropic match with the class of 2021. Another portion established the class of 2021 endowed fund for mental health wellness to support student access to mental health wellness programs, resources, and initiatives at Denison University. Lastly, the other portion granted over $100,000 to community organizations in Licking County. All of this driven by and for the class of 2021. Thank you again to the Silverstein family. Each of us has benefited in some way by the financial support of the annual fund. And that support comes in part from alumni that have gone before us. These alumni gave so that we could have the same opportunities and resources that they had. This way of giving back, both now and in the future, helps us to stay involved in this community that we will always be a part of. We hope that our class will continue to give back to Denison in a variety of ways long after today. Classmates, good luck in your future pursuits and enjoy the day of celebration. Thank you, Denison, for a great four years. Each year at commencement, we pause to recognize members of our faculty who are retiring. It is now my great honor to recognize eight, eight members of the Denison faculty whose collective exemplary service to the college totals 238 years. Full descriptions of their backgrounds and accomplishments appear in your program. Their contributions to our community of learning will be deeply missed. As I call your name, would you please stand? And they should be in the first row of the faculty section. Some of them cannot be here today, but I will read their short citation to honor their service publicly. Brenda Boyle, professor of English, 18 years of service. As a member of the English faculty and director of the Writing Center, Brenda is interested in American literature of the 20th and 21st centuries with a special focus on issues of rhetoric, race, gender, sexuality, and disability. Her research and publications extend from the study of American masculinities, formations in war, especially the Vietnam War, to representations of gender and sexuality through disability 
to gender in the Gilmore Girls. Tom Brassoud, Associate Professor of Math and Computer Science, 19 years of service. Tom has been instrumental, an instrumental teacher and scholar in the Department of Math and Computer Science. He has completely revised or created several systems courses and anchored the department's systems pedagogy and developed a data science presence with the advent of a data systems course and a textbook he authored for that course. He is a recognized expert in computer architectures for scalable and distributed processing. His career before Denison includes working for MIT Lincoln Laboratory in real-time radar systems, ISIS distributed systems, and Lucent Technologies. Robert Russo, Assistant Professor of Physical Education and Health, Exercise, and Sports Studies, Head Men's Soccer Coach, 22 years of service. Rob now completes his 22nd year as Denison's head men's soccer coach. Since his arrival in Granville, he has guided the men's soccer team to three NCAC conference championships, numerous NCAA tournament appearances, 148 victories, and three NCAA Division III tournament appearances. He has twice been named the NSCAA Great Lakes Region Coach of the Year, before coming to Denison, Rob was a highly successful coach at Miami University, Gannon University in Erie, Pennsylvania, and the University of South Carolina, Spartanburg, earning various Coach of the Year designations several times. Michael Caravana, Associate Professor of Physical Education, Head Men's Lacrosse Coach, 28 years of service. Mike now completes his 28th year at Denison. As head men's lacrosse coach, Mike has led the team to win 85% of its games while advancing to the NCAA quarterfinals six times and the NCAA semifinals in 2017. Across all levels of NCAA lacrosse, Mike ranks 18th in winning percentage and total wins. He is just one of 21 coaches in college lacrosse history to reach the 300-win milestone. He ranks 10th in Division III history in wins and 7th in winning percentage. In 1994, he was named the U.S. ILA Division III Coach of the Year. He is also a seven-time North Coast Athletic Conference Coach of the Year with his most recent award coming in 2021. Kirk Combe, Professor of English, 30 years of service. Kirk teaches literature, critical theory, and writing. His specialty area is restoration in 18th century British literature with an emphasis on satire and stage comedy. He won the Charles A. Brickman Teaching Excellence Award in 2011 and was named to the Dr. Viola Kleindes endowed professors, professors, professorship in 2017. He has published several books, numerous academic articles on satire, drama, literary history, popular culture, pedagogy, and aging, the novel 2084, and has screenwritten and produced short films. Joy Sperling, professor of art history and visual culture, 32 years of service. Joy has been a driving force in the department of first the art history program and then the art history and visual culture program at Denison. Chair for multiple terms, she has guided the development of each successive major design. Her method seminar was the program hallmark. She has made important art historical contributions in modern and contemporary American and European art, photography, and print culture. Over the last three decades, she has become a leader in visual culture studies. David Baker, professor of English, 37 years of service.
David has held the Thomas B. Fordham Chair in Creative Writing since 1996. He is the author of six critical books and 12 books of poetry, including Never Ending Birds, which won the Theodore Retka Memorial Poetry Prize. For his work, he has received fellowships and awards from the John Simon Guggenheim Memorial Foundation, the National Endowment for the Arts, the Poetry Society of America, the Ohio Arts Council, and the Society of Midland Authors. He is also poetry editor of the Kenyon Review. Finally, but not least, Anthony Tony Liska, professor of philosophy, 52 years of service. <laughs> Tony, holder of the Maria Teresa Barney Chair of Philosophy since 2004, embodies the scholar, teacher, citizen ideal to which Denison faculty members aspire. The Liska Center for Scholarly Engagement, heir to the honors program Tony built at Denison, bears his name in recognition of his dedication for over half a century to helping students, faculty, and the institution flourish. He has devoted his intellectual life to the study of neo-Aristotelians, most notably the greatest neo-Aristotelian of all of them, Thomas Aquinas. He is also a Granville historian and author of Granville, Ohio, published in 2004 and has contributed to the life of the community beyond Denison as a member of the Granville Historical Society, the Licking County Democratic Party, and in a more leisurely mode, the Buckeye Yacht Club. Could we please honor these retirees one more time? Thank you. I also want to acknowledge and just thank all of our retiring faculty. Um, <clears throat> obviously, I thank you for your service to the college, but more importantly, I thank you for the mentorship you've given to generations of students. Just thank you. And, and Tony, I know you're retiring, but I'm assuming you're still teaching a full course load in the fall, is that right? So um, being a college president comes with lots of very cool things you get to do and things you're honored to be able to do. Um, <clears throat> been in higher ed administration for 20 years, and I think what I'm about to do is probably the thing that I'm most grateful for having the opportunity to do and the most pride I've felt. Denison has a long tradition, as you know, of taking time at commencement to honor people who've achieved the highest distinction in their fields and whose work has had a broad impact in society and who exemplified the ideals of the college. Today, we're privileged to honor four individuals who have made broad and highly significant contributions to their fields and to the world. We are honored and grateful today to welcome three scientists from The Ohio State University and to confer honorary degrees on them. And I want to go off script for a second. Um, as many of you know, hopefully all of you, I wrote most of the year two emails every week, sometimes more, sometimes a little bit less. But in all those emails, I talked about our team of research scientists and epidemiologists, and I would sometimes have students stop me to ask, do they really exist and who are they? <laughs> this is them. Um, these are the three people without whom you would have been home with your parents this fall. Um, these are the three people without whom we wouldn't have had classes in person this spring. <laughs> And just because you can never stretch a good friendship too far, these are the three people we called and said, we're grateful you found a way to open the campus. You're, we're grateful that you found a way to have classes take person in person in the spring. Can you also find a way for us to be able to play sports, have live performances in theater, music, and dance in person inside, and allow all of our student organizations to meet? It's just a long way of saying, um, we owe them a debt of gratitude in a lot of different ways. We wouldn't have made it through the year without them. But more importantly, um, they, in my view, represented this year the very best of higher education. All of your faculty chose to become professors because they love teaching, 
but also because they believe in the project of intellectual inquiry and scholarship. We believe in fact, in reason, in rationality. We actually believe when humanity faces its most challenging moments, it's going to be scholars who step up and are able to do the original research that helps us find our way. It is Dr. Peter Moeller, Dr. Allison Norris, and Dr. Abigail Norris Turner who led the research on COVID, who didn't just help us, but helped the great state of Ohio save lives, keep our economy going, and find a way for our communities to heal. In doing so, they represented why higher education matters so much and why intellectual inquiry and scholarship is a foundational part of a healthy society. The third, as I said to them at, at, at breakfast this morning, while they're not Denisonians yet, but they will be in a few minutes, um, they actually lived our mission this year. They were autonomous thinkers, discerning moral agents, and engaged citizens. I don't know how many hours they gave on top of their already full-time jobs when the state needed them last year to help figure out what COVID was and how we would manage it. Um, but they did what we ask of our students, to learn to think for yourself, to do it with ethics and values, and to care about the communities around you. So this is the last time I'll ask this today, but can everybody please rise and can we just thank them? So for all the parents who thanked me last night, true is my life, you just listen to smarter people than you and they make everybody look good. That's what they did. At this time, I would like to welcome to the lectern Alexandra Schimmer, Denison's general counsel and the nominator of our honorees. Alexandra. President Weinberg, I am pleased to present Dr. Peter Moeller, Dr. Allison Norris, and Dr. Abigail Norris Turner, candidates for the honorary degree Doctor of Science. The trustees of Denison University, by virtue of the authority vested in them, and upon the recommendation of the faculty thereof, confer upon Peter Moeller, a scientist, academic leader, problem solver, and builder of teams within and across institutions nationally and globally. Distinguished researcher on abnormal heart rhythms and complex cardiovascular disease. Visionary research enterprise leader who turns understanding into impact. And champion of the synergies born from diverse and multidisciplinary teams. Critical leader and partner to teams of researchers in the development of testing solutions therapeutic trials, and diagnostic platforms for addressing the COVID-19 pandemic, and partner to government officials and communities across the state, country, and world to introduce these aids and innovations more widely and to address health access disparities among underserved population. A friend to Denison and an invaluable resource for the university, the state of Ohio, and the country, who has embodied the core values of the liberal arts through an active and versatile spirit and the pursuit of deeper understandings for navigating the challenges of our dynamic world. The degree of Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa, given in Granville in the state of Ohio, this 22nd day of May, 2021, being the 245th year of the Republic and of the University 190. Peter, by the virtue of the authority vested in me, by the Board of Trustees and on the recommendation of, facu of the faculty, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor Science, Honoris Causa. The faculty marshals will invest you with the hood appropriate to your degree, and I present you with this diploma. Trustees of Denison University, by the virtue of the authority vested in them 
and upon the recommendation of the faculty thereof, confer upon Allison Norris, a global scholar, epidemiologist, and medical doctor, whose research in infectious disease and reproductive health has spanned across Africa and the United States and across the fields of public health, medicine, policy, and law. An investigator of HIV and AIDS among mi migrant workers in Tanzania, the reproductive health needs of rural populations in Malawi, and the impact of law and policy on reproductive health in Ohio, an agile and adaptive investigator of the COVID-19 pandemic, an illuminator of insights on how policy and culture shaped health decisions and outcomes, and a seeker of clinical as well as community-based solutions to complex health needs of diverse populations. A friend to Denison and an invaluable resource for the university, the state of Ohio, and the country, who has embodied the core values of the liberal arts through an active and versatile spirit and the pursuit of deeper understandings for navigating the challenges of our dynamic world. The degree of Doctor of Science, honoris causa, given in, in Granville in the state of Ohio this 22nd day of May, 2021, being the 245th year of the Republic and of the University, the 190th. Allison, by the virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and on the recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Science, honoris causa. The faculty marshals will invest you with the hood appropriate to your degree and I have the great honor of presenting you this diploma. The trustees of Denison University, by the virtue of the authority vested in them and upon the recommendation of the faculty thereof, confer upon Abigail Norris Turner, a scholar and researcher of epidemiology, intricate and sensitive explorer of the health concerns of the vulnerable populations in the United States and internationally, leader in critical reproductive health research, agile and adaptive investigator of the COVID-19 pandemic, partner to governments and communities, and a paradigm of public health as public service. A friend to Denison, and an invaluable resource for the university and the state of Ohio and the country, who's embodied the core values of the liberal arts through an active and versatile spirit and the pursuit of deeper understandings for navigating the challenges of our dynamic world. The degree of Doctor of Science, honoris causa, given in Granville in the state of Ohio this 22nd day of May, 2021, being the 245th year of the Republic and of the university, the 190th. Abby, by the virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and on the recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Science, honoris causa. The faculty marshals will invest you with the hood appropriate to your degree, and I have the great honor of presenting you this diploma. That was super fun. Both to thank them for what they did for the college, but for all of us who live in the state of Ohio, as we know the state of Ohio navigated the COVID pandemic and it was these three who helped lead the way. So honored to have them here today, honored to call them Denisonians. And finally, I have the great honor of um, offering, uh, of, of introducing our next honoree who's one of our most distinguished alumna and friend of the college, the very Reverend Dr. Kelly Brown Douglas, class of 1979. Uh, Kelly is the Dean of the Episcopal Divinity School at Union Theological Seminary, the Bill and Judith Moyers Chair in Theology at the Union Theological Seminary, the Canon Theolo uh, Theologian at the Washington National, National Cathedral, and the Theologian in Residence at Trinity Church Wall Street. Um, we honor Kelly today is a distinguished theologian and activist, and we recognize the many ways in which he has succeeded as a scholar, an educator, and a leader. We are deeply proud to call Kelly one of our own. Due to the pandemic, she's not with us in person today, but we're conferring her degree remotely. At this time, I'd like to welcome to the lectern Dr. John Jackson, a pro Associate Professor of Religion and Black Studies, 
who nominated our honoree. Mr. President, I am deeply honored to present the very Reverend Dr. Kelly Brown Douglas Class of 1979 candidate for the honorary degree, Doctor of Humane Letters. The trustees of Denison University, by the virtue of the authority vested in them and upon recommendation of the faculty thereof, confer upon Kelly Brown Douglas, Denison Class of 1979, a proud alumna, scholar, professor, prophetic voice, and visionary leader theologian and author, originator of womenist theology, minister who with scholarship confronted the Paris setting and in multiple contexts embodied the theology she proclaimed and verified its authenticity. A champion immersed in the African-American setting, religious and secular, advocating with clarity and minimized complexity, contributing rigorously first at Denison, throughout graduate school, and into her career in academia, functioning in her faith tradition in ways bold and convincing, the embodiment of the creed, Black Women's Lives Matter, transforming each context of her professional career with compassion and courage, unsettling the settled. As Dean of the Episcopal Divinity School at Union Theological Seminary, and as the Bill and Judith Moyers Chair in Theology at Union the uh, Theological Seminary, and as the canon theologian at the Washington National Cathedral and as theologian in resident at Trinity Church Wall Street, bringing a powerful intellect and impassioned preaching to all these places of influence, no less so than to us here at Denison. The degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, given in Granville in the state of Ohio, this 22nd day of May, 2021, being the 245th year of the Republic and of the university, the 190th. Kelly, by the virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and on the recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Earlier this week, another distinguished Denison alum, the very Reverend Randolph Hollerith, class of 1986, who is the Dean of Washington National Cathedral invested Kelly with her doctoral hood in the National Cathedral in Washington. Congratulations, Kelly. We're pleased to not only be able to honor Kelly Brown Douglas today, but to be able to hear from her as our keynote speaker. Kelly? Denison Board of Trustees, President Weinberg, faculty, thank you for this honor beyond words of receiving this honorary doctorate from my beloved alma mater. And I thank my fellow alum, my colleague and indeed friend and brother, Dean here at the Washington National Cathedral, Randy Hollerith, for taking the time to bestow this honor upon me. In fact, Randy's brother and I were friends while both students at Denison, and so Randy and I go back a long way, as do my connections to Denison. For Denison has been a part of my life since my sisters, my eldest, Karen, who is also a Denison alum, my brother and I would explore this campus as little children each time we would come to visit my grandparents who lived at 210 Sunrise here in the village. Never did I dream as a child that I would attend this university, and it would be beyond my grandparents' wildest imaginations that I would be standing here today receiving this honor. As a student here at Denison, I made lifelong friends during my years as a psychology major, and I can truthfully say that Denison changed the course of my life, as I have written about many times. When David Woodyard, then dean of the chapel, introduced me to James Cone's book, Black Theology of Liberation, 
to be sure. I certainly would not be standing here as a theologian but for my beloved Dean Woodyard introducing me to that book at a pivotal time in my life. And so, President Weinberg and Denison family, I thank you for this honor. And most of all, I thank you for the journey that was Denison, a journey that sent me on my way. But most importantly on this day, I want to congratulate and thank the graduates for allowing me the utter privilege of sharing this time with you, especially when I know that many of you are asking, who is she? And no worries, if I were sitting in your seats today, I would probably be asking that too. So thank you. Thank you for indulging me this time on this your special day. Thank you for allowing me to share with you just a few words that hopefully will hold some meaning for you as you leave this part of your journey and begin another part. Now, of course, after the year we have had, I don't have to tell any of you that these times of ours are complicated, challenging, if not confusing for our world, let alone for our nation. For we live in a time in which a global health pandemic, COVID-19, has laid bare for some who did not know before the life-negating realities of another long-ignored pandemic, that of racial injustice and inequity. And so it is that our country faces a time of reckoning, if you will, for we must decide what kind of nation we want to be. Do we want to be a nation in which there is truly freedom and justice for all, where each person is treated as sacred and therefore can rightly pursue life, liberty, and happiness? Or do we want to be a nation that carries forth an historical legacy where some are granted undue privileges because of who they are, while others are subjugated to unjust penalties because of who they are not? Our country is without a doubt at a crossroads as we decide whether we as a nation, we as a people will live into the dream of our better angels or foster the nightmare of our worst demons. As for me, and I trust for each of you as well, I am banking on the dream, which means I am banking on a commitment from each one of us to lead this nation toward its better angels. And so what does that mean? What does that look like? What kind of commitment is required of us? Oh, I have no doubt that during your time here at Denison, graduates, through the conversations, experiences, and encounters you had in and out of the classroom, and through the tools of analysis that have been nurtured, that your knowledge and experiences have been broadened, providing you with the tools of not imagination to envision and work toward a more just future for our nation and for our world for your children. And as important as the education that you received here at Denison is toward making the dream of a more just world and society is, there is something even more fundamental than that. For if indeed we are really committed really committed to becoming the best of who we can be as a nation, as a people, then that commitment is not defined by the big thoughts, the big analysis, or even the big words that we have learned here at Denison. Rather, it is defined by a commitment to the little words, the little words that seem to have become lost to us as a nation, indeed, as a people. These are little words, Denison family, that I believe absolutely can change our world. And so, what are these words? First, they are little words of respect, 
Little words that respect a person's humanity. Little words like calling them by their chosen name and not non-accidentally accidentally, misnaming them. Little words like calling them by their right ti rightful title, not ignoring it or addressing them by their proper pronoun, he, she, him, her, they, them, and not belittling it. Little words of respect are words that recognize people as essential human beings not just essential workers. Little words of respect go a big way in affirming the sacred humanity of all who have breath or have ever had breath. For here is the thing, one's race, one's gendered identity, one's sexual expression, one's class, creed, religion, culture, language, spoken, country of origin, or any other discriminating human attribute does not determine whether or not a person deserves respect. No, the determining factor for whether or not someone deserves respect is the very sacred breath they breathe. And that Denison family means every single human being that walks the face of this earth, no matter where they live, what they look like, the language, language they speak, or the labor they do. Every single human being is sacred that they breathe makes them so. A people who no longer speak little words of respect to, another one, to one another is a people for whom incivility, callousness, mean-spiritness, and sheer inhumanity becomes standard practice, as standard as taking somebody's breath away. Zay Jones, a wide receiver for the Los Angeles Raiders, said that one day while he was in a store shopping with his cousin, an elderly white woman approached him and said, I'm from Minneapolis, and I just want you to know that your life matters. Little words of respect. They are words that can change the dignity of this world of our nation, of a people. Then there are little words of gratitude, words like, thank you, or I appreciate that, or I'm grateful for that. Have you ever noticed, Denison, how in our world today we move through it without stopping to say thank you, be it thank you to one another, or just out loud to ourselves for seeing another day? We have become a taken-for-granted people, a taken-for-granted society. If this past year has taught us nothing else, it has revealed how we have taken for granted our Earth and its resources therein, even as we have taken for granted our relationships one to another. We have acted entitled to resources, entitled to health, entitled to freedom, and entitled to relationships for that matter, entitled, not grateful for them. And be clear, that which we take for granted, we tend not to care for, we tend not to look after. Instead, we are inclined to squander, abuse, and discard it. An ungrateful society an unthankful people is a wasteful society and people where natural resources are plundered, where the earth is abused and lives are wasted. Little words of gratitude go a long way to creating a world, a society, a people who value the richness of the world around them, the preciousness of creation itself and the sheer graciousness of human relationships. At 7 p.m. each night over the past year, New Yorkers opened a window or stepped out onto their balconies or rooftops and made some noise for two minutes to give thanks and gratitude to all the frontline workers who were risking their lives every day for them. Little words of gratitude, thank you, those are words that can change the character of the world, of a nation, 
of a people. And then there are little words of responsibility. Oh, how we have forgotten to speak these words. Little words like, I was wrong. I made a mistake. It's on me. My bad. How easy it has become in these times that are ours to seize upon the mistakes, the missteps, and misjudgments of others while not taking responsibility for our own mistakes, our own missteps, our own misjudgments. Here's the thing. No matter our presumed status, no matter how important or great we think we are, no matter how educated, we all mess up. Each and every one of us, at some time or another, fall short of the mark. We all make misjudgments. We all make mistakes. And here is the thing. The way to a more moral society is not a way where people turn away from their mistakes. No, the way to a more moral society is where, the, is where imperfect people are willing to speak words of responsibility, like, I was wrong. It is only when we can look to ourselves, admit and take responsibility for our faults, our flaws, our missteps, our mistakes, that we are then open to learning and to becoming a better person, to becoming better people, to becoming a better nation. To say I was wrong is the first step toward righting the wrong. You can't make right that which you never admit was wrong in the first place. The buck stops here, President Harry Truman said. Little words of responsibility, my bad. These are words that can go a big way toward changing the soul of a nation, of a people, of a world. And then there are little words of humility, like help. Our world, our society values self-reliance. It is better to be dependent, indep independent than dependent, we are taught, and perhaps it is. But this I do know, that which makes us humane, that is compassionate with the will to help others, that begins with our capacity to ask for help for ourselves. To lose that capacity is to lose our very humanity. When we are not able to ask for the help we need for whatever reason, we can too easily resent others who ask for the help they need. We cultivate our own compassion in as much as we are able to ask others to be compassionate toward us. That is, in as much as we are able to speak little words of humility, like help, I need you, give me a hand, can't do it on my own, didn't get here, by my own bootstraps. Words of humility are not a sign of our human weakness. Rather, they are the very strength of our humanity. Bottom line, a society, a people who are unable to speak little words of humility is a society or a people who lack compassion and who lack the ability then to give help to those most in need of help. Help! Freddie Gray cried out on a Baltimore street, and no one stopped to help. And so it is that little words of humility help. They are words that can change the heart of a world, of a nation, of a people. And finally, there are those little words of awe, like oh my, or wow. There is not a day that should go by that we are not awed by the very presence and movement of goodness in our world. 
to be awed by the presence of goodness in this world is not to ignore the suffering, the despair, the injustice, indeed the shadow of evil that lurks in our world. Rather, to be awed is to recognize that even in the midst of all that is bad, unjust, and evil that is in our world, even in the midst of the underside, in the midst of the worst of who we are, that indeed the worst of who we are is not the whole of who we are. There is, I like to say, that force of goodness that breaks in every once in a while, that force of goodness pulling us toward our better angels, reminding us of our very created goodness, our very potential to be better. I was awed by the goodness in the story of Sean Marcus Drumgoal, a young black man who said that after the murder of Auburn Aubrey while he was jogging in his neighborhood, Sean said, I was afraid to walk by myself in my childhood neighborhood because, he said, I was afraid I wouldn't live to see another day. He went on to say that when I shared the fear with my neighbors, they said, we will walk with you. And they walked. Wow, I said when hearing that story. To forget the wow is to risk falling into a pothole of futility and despair and thus to miss the inspiration to keep going, to push forward, to get better, to be awed by the moments of goodness breaking into our world is indeed to be reminded not to give up on our world, upon ourselves, and indeed upon one another. Little words of all, wow. They're words that carry the hope of a better world, a better nation, a better people. And so, Denison family, and especially you graduates, as you leave this place, know this, you can change the world. For such change does not begin with the big thoughts, the big ideals, or the big words. Rather, it begins with the little words, little words of respect, he, she, them, Little words of gratitude, thank you. Little words of responsibility, my bad. Little words of humility, help. And little words of awe, wow. Let the little words we speak reflect the nation and the people we want to be. Thank you, Denison family. Deeply, deeply proud that Kelly Brown Douglas is a Denison alum and grateful for her commitment to Denison. Um, I had a chance to read the remarks earlier early this week and uh, both inspiring and smart. Um, some of you may have heard Kelly speak when she's come to Denison before. If you have a chance to, to meet her as an alum, don't pass up that opportunity. So um, now we get to do the fun stuff. <laughs> I now call upon the provost of the college, Dr. Kim Copeland, to preside over the presenta presentation of candidates in the awarding of the baccalaureate degrees as authorized by the faculty of Denison University. Will the members of the class of 2021 please stand? <laughs> President Weinberg, I have the honor of presenting for their degrees the members of the Denison University class of 2021. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Denison University and on the recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon each of you your degree with all of the rights, 
privileges and responsibilities appertaining thereto. You are now officially college graduates and Denison alum. Congratulations. So we can do this democratically. It's going to take about an hour and 15 minutes to do this. Would you all like to stand or sit? I'm kidding. Let's sit. So um, President Copeland's going to now, Provost <laughs> Copeland's now going to read the names of the graduates. Um, and Dean of Faculty Dan Gibson's going to direct you to the platform so you can receive your diplomas. Um, just two, we're going to do two things a little bit different today. One is um, we do have a fair amount of seniors who are not here, mostly because of COVID-related stuff, but also we have a few athletes who are off playing in the NCAAs today. But we're going to still read their names since most, yeah, we're excited about that. Um, and then our baseball team will be off next week to the NCAAs tournament. Um, so, but we're going to still read their names, we're, but we're going to read their names in abstentia because we hope that they're online watching. The other is, and this is going to sound kind of goofy, but it's been a goofy year, we had extensive debates this week on I, whether I should just hand you your diploma, hand you your diploma and shake your hand, do a fist bump or a um, elbow bump. So I'm gonna follow the lead of our great football coach, Jack Hadem, and just call an audible. I'll do whatever you wanna do. I'll hand you your diploma, I'll shake your hand, whatever you want. It's been a COVID year, so. Kim? Class co-governor, and President's Medalist, Fatima Alzara El Ghazawi, magna cum laude. <laughs> Class Co Governor, Jacob Allen Primack. President's Medalists, Sarah Abu Rashed, magna cum laude. Max Curtin, magna cum laude. Madeline K. Durham, summa cum laude. Jacqueline Maricela Figueroa, summa cum laude, class co-salutatorian. Jacob Allen Rains, magna cum laude. Shruti Shankar, summa cum laude, class co-salutatorian. Megan Wong, summa cum laude. Graduates receiving the Bachelor of Science degree, Hope Naomi Adams, cum laude. Taya Adams. Kabita Adhikari. Emily Ruth Allen, magna cum laude. In absentia, Hannah May Austin. Marco Balick, cum laude. Daniel Hunter Biddle. Elsie Bunyan. Ethan Stewart Kane, magna cum laude. Megan Alexandra Callahan, magna cum laude. Emily Jane Campbell. Catherine Alexandra Cash. In absentia, Guanxi Chen. Clotilde, 
Clotilde Ann Cirillano, cum laude. Alexander Cruz. Casia Ose Danso. Shaylee Alexis Davis. Philip Raja Dimora Srivastova. In absentia, Khan Deng. Emily DeShields. Christina Marie Diaz, cum laude. Gabrielle Dofrain, cum laude. Lucy Everett. Ransley Onwell Familia. Sarah Caitlin Flat. Edgar Garcia Jr. Maria Gomez. Henry Hagemeyer, cum laude. In absentia, Stephanie Joy Jackson. Megan Jaffe, summa cum laude, class valedictorian. Matthew Kelsey. Kaylee Knopf, cum laude. Alicia Bella Kors, summa cum laude. Donitza Kontich, cum laude. Maida Laubihari. Clarine Larson, magna cum laude. Byung-hoon Lee, cum laude. Greta Lisa, magna cum laude. Simon Liao, magna cum laude. In absentia, Huzin Ma, cum laude. Emma Marquise Kelly. Gray McCarthy, magna cum laude. Jennifer Montenegro. Emily Muckle. Christopher Negrete. Sydney Nyquist, magna cum laude. Alondra Ortega. Ramon Ortega the Fourth. Freddie Daniel Ortiz. In absentia, Casey Lynn Pierce, magna cum laude. Hannah Marie Pyatt, cum laude. Remington Ponzi. (laughs) 
John Pulford. Sarah Catherine Rajevich. Abby Marie Reppert. Victoria Kenworthy Sove, magna cum laude. Denise Marie Seifert. Esther Severe. Shraddha Shankar Summa Cum Laude. In absentia, she E. Rahul Shrestha, Summa Cum Laude. Sarah Elizabeth Spielman. Adriana Carolyn Stagg. Samantha Lee Swentoski. Tony Tang, cum laude. Mitchell Tai, cum laude. In absentia, Julie Tran. In absentia, Bennett George Van Horn, cum laude. Aditi Varki. Heaven Wade. Jantao Wong, cum laude. Natalie Catherine Weiss, cum laude. Isabel May Gordy Wellick, summa cum laude. Margaret Francisco Wilson. Marisol Zaragoza. Xinyi Zhao. Graduates receiving the Bachelor of Arts degree, Megan Acarino. <laughs> Baltazar Avire III. <laughs> Thayab El Nuaimi. <laughs> In absentia, Vanessa Alonzo Castrojon. Cameron Thomas Alton Dunkel, summa cum laude. Whittier Hedges Ambrose. Liz Anastasiadis. Henry Ward Anderson, cum laude. Lily Anderson. Jack Thomas Arnstein. Morgan Arroyo. Elizabeth Arterberry, cum laude. August Samuel Osman. In absentia, Felicia Kristen Atkinson, cum laude. Ariana Geyer Elisi. In absentia, Fyodor Bodkin. Jocelyn J. Baeza.
Julia Baggio. Neil Ballar. Madeline Mavanwee Baker. Millicent Loveday Ball, summa cum laude. Dadion Lewis Baron Galbavi. Fernando Barrientos. Abdullah Berry. Pritam Bosnet Magna Cum Laude. Zaya Marie Helms Beal. Caroline Prim Verse. Mia Bedford Lazo. Hannah Susan Bennett. Anna Maeve Berman. Noel Boyages Cum Laude. Catherine Renee Boyd. Graham Braden. Verison C. Bradshaw. Caroline Hannah Bramer. Audrey Lauren Brenner, cum laude. Juliana Nicole Brenner, magna cum laude. Anna Hansen Bridge, cum laude. Trayana Brinson. Ramsey Ellis Bristol. Lindsay Diaz Bulls. Austin Burgess. Owen Burns. Daniel Kane Jr. Sky Therese Calderon. Brooke Lacey Cameron. Isabel Campbell. Maya D. Carolina. Tuesday Carson. Catherine Bernadette Carter. Ann Chambers. Natanya Elise Chaskis. In absentia, Ming Chen. Magna cum laude. In absentia, Ting Chen. Zikong Chen. In absentia, Matthew David Cherry. Hope Anderson Cherubini, summa cum laude. Mia Paloma Chappi. David Ho Cho. Jacob Daniel Shrecky. Hannah Elizabeth Ciancola, magna cum laude. 
Vivian Cirillano, magna cum laude. Marin Rebecca Clark. Allison Elizabeth Clark. Tema Ann Cohen, summa cum laude. Kyra Cola, cum laude. Nina Rafaela Cosden, magna cum laude. Caitlin Quinn Coventry. Olivia Zabel Cowley. Dylan Lloyd Cox. Madeline Coyne. Adam James Cromwell. Ian Crosby. In absentia, Brian Crotty. In absentia, Megan Elizabeth Cunningham, summa cum laude. Ethem A. Ducky, magna cum laude. Kate Dana Miller, magna cum laude. Kanisha De La Rosa. In absentia, Adrian Adolfo Del Viller. Jacob Aaron Denon, cum laude. Libby Dickerson, cum laude. Julia Shea DiFilippo. In absentia, Yishin Ding. Bridget De Palermo. Nicole Elizabeth Donaldson, cum laude. Timothy Robert Dowling. Charles Burke Dykstall, cum laude. Daniel Patrick Earls. Gail Edminster. In absentia, Mary Claire Edwards. Franklin Otito Egbo. James Whitaker Ellingwood. In absentia, Parker Brooks Esposito. In absentia, Elizabeth Campbell Farnham, cum laude. In absentia, James Thomas Fennessy. Connor Mark Fenton. Stephen Filinowski. In absentia, Molly Fisher. Michael Flanagan. In absentia, Madison Lynn Fleming. Kate Ann Force. Christian Franco. Jack Frazier. Sydney Guadalupe Frausto. James Hodges Fryer. Connor Furio. Balin Galvez, cum laude. Orvi Garg. Alyssa Lee Geddes. Taylor Jordan Gerhardt. 
Stella Gewers. Maxwell Giarusso, cum laude. Rakeb Gurma. In absentia, Charlotte Kellogg Godfrey. Samuel L. Goldberg. Madison Kate Gordon, magna cum laude. William David Grady. Devin Kathleen Gramley, cum laude. Dallas Christopher Griffiths. Elvis Guerrero de Jesus. In absentia, Juwan Rashad Gully. Danielle Josephine Gatilius, magna cum laude. Tim Hagemeister, cum laude. Carter Hall. Catherine Louise Hammersmith. Fatima Haroon, cum laude. Victoria Lynn Hurd. Quinn J. Heinrich, cum laude. Thomas Owen Hellman. Alexa Nelson Helm. Sarah Hendricks, cum laude. Abby Elizabeth Henry, magna cum laude. Alexandra Hesterberg, magna cum laude. Joe Hoidel. Sean C. Hickey. Harrison Hicks. Elizabeth Higley, magna cum laude. Lyndon Joan Hill. Summer Lee Hofelt. Brooke Ann Holland, magna cum laude. In absentia, Callie A. Holmberg. In absentia, Alexandra Holmes, summa cum laude. Eric Holmes. Madison Rose Hopkins. Bridget Ryan Horton, cum laude. Drake Horton, magna cum laude. In absentia, Yu Chen Hua. Sophie Height Hudson, summa cum laude. Alexander Hughes, cum laude. Sally Hyde. Ibrahim Shazad Iftikhar, magna cum laude. Devin Wade Irvin. Elizabeth Itzkoff. Joanna Isateko. Alethea Spencer Jodic. <laughs> Devanchi Jalen. Angelica Jang. 
Shmilanda Jean Baptiste, cum laude. Sophia Marie Jeans. Samuel M. Joe. Gigi Jones. In absentia, Michelle Kabira. Cobalt Emmanuel Kaiser. Martha Kamikaze. In absentia, Grace Michelle Kaminsky. In absentia, Runzi Kong, cum laude. Diamond Young Birkarki. In absentia, Lindsay Susan Karsh. Kayla Casper. Andrew L. K. Corin Kiefer. Matu Keita. Catherine Wynne Kerrigan. Lauren Melissa Kessler, summa cum laude. Ruslana Karevska. Ryan M. Kirkpatrick. Yalia Klish. Sophia Kleitz. Magna cum laude. Tristan Noor. Bridget Grace Korwitz, cum laude. Madeline Korkowski, cum laude. Allison Krupa, magna cum laude. William Flint Krushna. Mayank Dave Kumar, cum laude. Max Lawn. David Thomas LaMountain. Jack Lauer. Carrie Lawler. Kate May Lawler, magna cum laude. Gregory Laxton. Lauren Julia Lazo. In absentia, Ha Van Lee. Quay Lay. Joanne Lee. Sydney Ann Lenz. Lily Calliope Bridget Levanis. Greta Luna Levine. In absentia, Hunter J. Lewis. In absentia, Zhang Yi Li, magna cum laude. In absentia, Yi Fang Lin. Brianna Rose Lisbon. Theodore Little. In absentia, C. Livingstone. Peyton Elizabeth Locke, magna cum laude. Zoe Michael Loitz, cum laude. Quinn Edward Lonergan, cum laude. Lizette Lopez. 
Mary Helen Lowe. Emma Haven Loy. In absentia, Ji Sheng Lu. Thomas Lee Luong, cum laude. Destiny Alanti Mack, magna cum laude. Sarah Grant McKenzie. Olivia McGarry, magna cum laude. Michael Malin. Benjamin Robert Mandelbrot. Oscar Mandahano. Maxwell Marshall, cum laude. Oscar Martinez. Katie Musso. Galen Annabelle May, magna cum laude. Brian Thomas McAuliffe. Margaret Grace McCann, cum laude. Patrick Thomas McGuigan. Reeves McKenney. George Markin McLanahan. John Hodges McPherson. In absentia, Abigail Hannah McThomas. Devin M. Meenan, cum laude. Simon Mahari. Arman Charles Meinecke. In absentia, Nahomi McConnon. Madeline Ann Mendels. Alice Helen Mesjak. Jeremiah Mills. Siobhan Mitchell, cum laude. Thomas Mitchell. In absentia, Nianika Mitra, cum laude. Amanda Marie Moldelski. Sandra Mondragon Hernandez. Elizabeth Ann Monroe. Adelida Montero. Sophia E. Mook. Kaylee Morowski. Kimberly Viana Moreira. Isabel Morgan Morrison. Daniel Munoz. Anna May Murphy. Monisha Jasmine Lachey Murray. Jalal Ahmed Nadim. Ayush Nima. In absentia, Rachel Newman. Stefan Newman, cum laude. Maxwell Newton. In absentia, Vin Nguyen. Helen Nickerson. 
Matthew Edward Nowling. Tucker James Newsom Clark, cum laude. Tarma Afriye Obang. Kobe Okrun. Oladipupo Olatimileon Ogandipa. Michael Combe O'Hara, magna cum laude. Cassian O'Keefe. Emma Serena Olgerson. Aidan McManus O'Neill. Kelly Faith O'Neill, cum laude. Natalie Francis Overby. Kendra Zeta Owens. Tammy Nicole Palasigue. Yash Pandey. Spencer Raymond Patinode, cum laude. Molly Patrick. Wynne Reed. Grant Putnam Peabody. Andrew Tyson Phelan. John Robert Phipps. In absentia, Zion Ping. Ellen Pitstick, magna cum laude. In absentia, Cole Russell Poifair. Chloe Pruitt, cum laude. John Pernode, cum laude. In absentia, Bihan Chin, magna cum laude. Andrew Patrick Quay. Josh Ratod. Rainbow Sky Ratliff. Teddy Reedy. Grace Harrington Reed. Mark McFadden Reed, cum laude. Jack David Riley. Ty Cole Robinson. Enrique Rodriguez. Lindsay Gale Rogers, magna cum laude. Ken Lee Rong. Kaylin May Rosenbaum. Henry Rosenberg. Vadislav Alexander Rotnoff. Anthony Rugiri. Christina Marie Saliba. In absentia, Frank Isaac Saltiel. Madeline Claire Sargent. Robert Saylor III, summa cum laude. Jack Scalia, cum laude. Riley Catherine Schaefer. 
Barzelli Hayes Bowman Schneider. Sarah Ann Schubert, magna cum laude. Wisdom Deshay Renee Scott. Abigail Scully. Joseph Reagan Semmel. Margaret Elizabeth Senesak, cum laude. Rowan Sharkey. Campbell McKay Shepherdson, cum laude. In absentia, Shengbo Shi. In absentia, Yilim Shin. Tamatopi Ayanconsola Shalola. In absentia, Danish Asad Siddiqui, cum laude. Charles Fairbank Siglo, cum laude. Zach Sipple. Andrew Kabler Smith. Elena Christine Smith, cum laude. Yuri Astor. Molly Caitlin Smith, magna cum laude. Sianna Kavanaugh Smith, cum laude. Eric So. Marguerite Solberg. Julia Elizabeth South. Tylil Rahim Spencer. Sandra Spurlock. Jack Staggs, cum laude. John William Stouffer. Heidi Hawksworth Staus. Noah Andrew Stein. Ben Stern, cum laude. Jeff Stevens. Anna Iben Stone, summa cum laude. Kobe Strell. Hey, Kobe! Caleb Strewing. In absentia, Dongbin Su. Georgia Catherine Sullivan. Michael Chase Summers. Colin Joseph Sanyi. Zinat Tabaku. Allison Tabit. Jane Taylor, summa cum laude. Kathleen Elizabeth Teasy, cum laude. In absentia, Adam Mershaw Tewahadi. Isabel Foy Thalen. Claire Elizabeth Tierney. Ellen Catherine Tierney. Hallie Lillian Tersh. Maya Tolomeo. Kate Toppin. Shelby Tour, magna cum laude. 
Lum Tron, summa cum laude. Ronald Coy Tran. Yeah, Ron. Amanda Autumn Rose Troutman. Grace Tully, cum laude. Matthew Udowski. Nico Uloa. Carly Marie Yunus. Andre Julian Uriarte. Abigail Elizabeth Valentine, summa cum laude. Timothy Cahoon Weidenheimer. Adam Venrick, cum laude. Stephen A. Villacorta. Sophie Vilter. Peyton Vining. Adeline Shaw Vischer. Jonathan Vo. Anna Vranken. Lise Wagner. Eleanor Beatrice Walker. Lucy Walker. Guakai Wong. In absentia, Jin Yi Wong, magna cum laude. Jian Tiang Wong. Amber Don Wardzala, magna cum laude. Nalani Ween, magna cum laude. Catherine Weinzerl. Brian Weisberg. Nicholas Wirt. Nina Marie Widen, magna cum laude. Sarah Elizabeth White. Logan Marie Wickman. Luke Wilson. Dayan Wilson. Madeline Whistler. Emma Jane Werner, cum laude. Justin Eugene Wolf. Jack Wolcott. Briggs Austin Wright. In absentia, Xiaochun Wu. Natalie Waisaki. Xiaoning Zhang. In absentia, Song Xu. In absentia, Sherry Shu. Morgan Taylor Yarborough, magna cum laude. In absentia, Hui Yu Yi. In absentia, Emerson Catherine Younger. Shelby Elizabeth Zarin. Talia Zeiger, magna cum laude. Jordan Alexa Zelvin, summa cum laude. Alice Jace Zimmer. Samantha Lynn Zimmerman. 
and Jack Zwimmer. Should we do that again? <laughs> it's a little hot. Um, can we just give the, the class of 2021 a round of applause again? So I never thought I would say this when we started classes on February 1st, but I'm actually sad to see the semester end in the year end, but I'm ready. Uh, just thank you. Thanks for what you did this year. Congratulations. You will always, always, always be a class that goes down in Denison history for what you did this year. Come back often um, and stay in touch and stay connected to each other. So as is our tradition, we close the commencement ceremony each year with the singing of the first verse to, to Denison, our alma mater. Um, I'm pleased to introduce new Denison graduate, Madison Gordon, who will sing it, sing it for us. Congratulations to our graduates. Just one moment, because you're, going, you're awaiting the turning of the tassels from Dean Dan Gibson. But before that, I'm going to ask that everyone remain seated for the recessional of the platform party and the faculty, and then shenanigans, yes? <laughs> Congratulations once again.
Denison Class of 2021. Please join together in moving your tassels from the right to the left and get ready to celebrate by the tossing of the mortar boards on three, two, one. Congratulations! <laughs>